Hi everyone, welcome back to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at ilovepathology.com. In this part, let's learn about a very important adrenal tumor that is pheochromocytoma. In the next 10 to 15 minutes, we will look into what adrenal medulla is. We will see the classific, we will understand the classification of tumors and then in detail about pheochromocytomas in terms of its pathogenesis, clinical features, morphology, complications, diagnosis and a bit about treatment of pheochromocytomas. So if you recollect in the last you know, four sessions, we had talked about the anatomy, histology and functions of adrenal gland along with hyperfunctions of zona glomerulosa, fasciculata and reticularis, right? So in this session, we will look into the neoplasms of adrenal medulla, particularly pheochromocytoma. So we know medulla which accounts for around 10% of the weight of the adrenal gland. It is composed of specialized neural crest cells you know, referred to as neuroendocrine cells and these cells are called as chromaffin cells. Chroma means color, affin for affinity which means these are the cells which have affinity to chromium salts particularly if tissue is immersed in the solution containing potassium dichromate stain the catecholamines which are present in these cells you know they oxidize the chromium salts in the stain and then impart brown color and that's why it's referred to as chromaffin cells and they secrete epinephrine norepinephrine you know these are the two very important hormones which respond whenever uh, when the body is in stress and it is also important hormone for regulation of blood pressure now let's let's learn a bit about the neural crest they give rise to sympathogonia which further differentiates into pheochromoblasts and neuroblasts the pheochromoblasts further differentiate into chromaffin cells of the adrenal medulla and the chromaffin cells which are of extra adrenal. When I say extra adrenal, it means pre aortic sympathetic plexuses and paravertebral sympathetic chain. So basically, these two are chromaffin cells which can be either of adrenal medulla or extra adrenal sites which are derived from pheochromoblasts. Whereas neuroblast can give rise to neurons of sympathetic ganglia. Now let us see what are the tumors arising from these cells. Chromaffin cells of adrenal medulla gives rise to pheochromocytoma. Extra adrenal chromaffin cells gives rise to paraganglioma. Right? So, neuroblast directly can give rise to neuroblastomas, whereas the differentiated cells, that is the neurons of sympathetic ganglia, can give rise to ganglioneuroma. So, these are the four important tumors which are derived from the sympathogonia. So, in this session, we are learning about pheochromocytoma. Paraganglioma and pheochromocytoma more or less looks similar in terms of histomorphological features. So, pheochromocytoma is a neoplasm which is composed of chromaffin cells. So, let us split this tumor pheochromocyto and oma. It is derived from the Greek word called pheos, which means dusky brown, chromo from chroma, which means color. And the color is due to chromaffin reaction as we learned earlier, right? Cyto is cell and oma depicts tumor. So, pheochromocytoma is a tumor which is composed of chromaffin cells which gives rise to dusky brown color in, you know, whenever it is immersed in potassium dichromate salts that is chromaffin reaction. So, these are tumors which release catecholamines and sometimes they can also release some other peptide hormones. Remember that these are a very rare cause of surgically correctable hypertension. As you know, most of the hypertension should be managed by medical line of management, right? So, this is one such case where you can manage hypertension by surgical means if the cause is pheochromocytoma. So, pheochromocytomas traditionally they were described as under rule of 10, where 10% 10 of the pheochromocytomas are extra adrenal, 10% of sporadic adrenal tumors are bilateral, whereas in case of familial you know, adrenal tumors, the bilaterality is up to 50%. 10% of adrenal tumors are malignant, whereas in case of extra adrenal, it is 20 to 40% of extra adrenal tumors are malignant. 10% of the adrenal tumors are not associated with hypertension, right? And 10% of the tumors are familial. This was the earlier, you know, uh, observation, but now 
it is said that it is around 25% of pheochromocytomas are familial in nature. So, when I say 25% of pheochromocytomas are familial, what does that mean? That means 25% of people are born with defective genes or mutated genes. What are those defective genes? These genes can be of two categories. One, genes affecting the growth receptor, growth factor receptor pathway and two, genes affecting hypoxia inducible factors which are HIF1 alpha and HIF2 alpha. The pheochromocytomas have defects in these two sets of genes. What are the names of the genes? These are the growth factor receptor pathway genes are RET and NF1 whereas VHL and EPAS1 are the genes which affect the hypoxia inducible factors. So, whenever the, these genes are mutated, the cells grow uncontrollably whereas in these cases, when the genes are mutated, these mutated genes, you know, they trick the body into thinking that there is no enough oxygen in the body and it thinks that it is a pseudo hypoxic state and then the cells grow uncontrollably. There are other genes as well like succinate dehydrogenase complex which can be further, you know, different subtypes including SDHB, SDHC and SDHD. So, these are also, you know, they are involved in energy production and oxygen sensing and wherever there is mutations of these genes, they mimic low oxygen and thereby leading to tumor growth. So, remember the genetic basis of pheochromocytoma is all about mutations involving these two sets of genes. That is what you need to remember, right? So, 25% of pheochromocytomas are familial whereas 75% are sporadic. Sporadic meaning, you know, the same genes which are mentioned earlier can be mutated even in sporadic cases. But the only difference between familial and sporadic is that they occur by chance, you know, and the, the mutations are not present at birth. When it is present at birth, then they are called familial, right? So, they, the mutations in these same set of genes occur by chance. So, let us understand some of the various syndromes associated with pheochromocytoma and or paraganglioma. The syndromes which are affected, which are associated with either pheochromocytoma or paraganglioma include men type 2A, multiple endocrine neoplasia type 2A syndrome where there is mutation of RET gene. The other tumors associated are medullary thyroid carcinoma and parathyroid hyperplasia. The second syndrome is MEN type 2B, again RET gene, oncogene mutation. The other tumors associated with this is medullary thyroid carcinoma, morphanoid habitus, mucocutaneous ganglioneuromas, hereditary paraganglioma 1 that is mutation of SDHD. The other tumor associated is GIST, which means gastrointestinal stromal tumor. So, von Hippel-Lindau syndrome, gene associated with VHL. The other tumors are renal cell carcinoma, hemangioblastoma, pancreatic endocrine neoplasm. Polycythemia paraganglioma syndrome, the gene involved is EPAS1 and other feature associated with this is polycythemia. So, there are three other important tumors as a syndromes associated with pheochromocytoma alone which includes neurofibromatosis type 1, hereditary paraganglioma 3 and hereditary paraganglioma 4. So, just note that there can be various syndromes associated with pheochromocytomas and also there will be other features other than the adrenal medullary tumor. So, what is a morphology? How does pheochromocytomas appear on gross examination? They can be small tumor, they can be very small tumor or they can in, they can be extremely large tumor and if they are small, they are circumscribed, they are less than 1 gram in you no know, weight whereas larger tumor can weigh up to 4 kgs. Usually, they are very well demarcated either by the connective tissue or by the tissue that is compressed adjacent to it. Okay, So, this is your normal adrenal cortex and that is the tumor which is very very well demarcated tumor. On cut section, the smaller tumors are often yellow tan, whereas larger tumors are the ones which are hemorrhagic, necrotic, and cystic in nature. So, when these tumors upon cut surface, cut section, when they are immersed in a solution of potassium dichromate, right, and then you incubate after around 30 minutes or so, or even few hours the whole tumor cut surface turns into brown color. This is what we understood, right? That's chromaffin reaction. 
So this is bromoaffin reaction of pheochromo cytoma. So microscopically, what you see, these are composed of bromoaffin cells, and these bromoaffin cells are arranged in the form of nests or clusters, and they are also called as balls of cells. And these balls of cells are surrounded by sustentacular cells. These are the supporting cells. Apart from the sustentacular cells, you also have many delicate vascular tissue which i'll be showing in the next slide so these are called as cell balls in german it is referred to as zell ballen cell meaning zell meaning cell and then ballen mean balls and that is why the this tumor the pattern of this tumor is referred to as zell ballen pattern which means the tumor is comprised of nests of cells and these are cell balls surrounded by sustentacular cells and a delicate fibrovascular stroma this is the term coined by dr alfred Kohn way back in 1903 and he was a german anatomist so look at this these are cell balls zell ballen pattern balls of cells surrounded by sustentacular cells and the delicate vasculature so histological picture of pheochromocytoma can easily make out that these are clusters or nests or balls of cells and you have delicate connective tissue which contains thin walled capillaries right so that's the scanner magnification you can make out that that's a cortex cortex which is compressed here and that is the tumor of the medulla on low power examination we can easily make out that this is composed of nests of these tumor cells nests of promaffin cells and these cells are polygonal in nature they have you know eosinophilic to you know slightly basophilic cute cytoplasm centrally placed nuclei sometimes these nuclei can be bizarre they can look pleomorphic and that's why it is very difficult to different. It is very difficult, very difficult to tell whether this pheochromocytoma is benign or malignant. It's very, very challenging, and the challenging nature is because of the tumors with very highly pleomorphic cells and bizarre cells. They can behave benign, very well benign. You know? Whereas the tumors which are having very highly bland, uniform-looking cells, they can be aggressive. So that is why it is very difficult to differentiate benign versus malignancy just by looking at histopathological examination. Therefore, the diagnosis of malignancy in pheochromocytomas is based exclusively on the presence of metastasis. And the metastasis can be either in the regional lymph nodes or in the liver, lung and bone. Right? So that's very important. You have to identify the presence of metastasis to call your tumor pheochromocytoma is malignant. Now, what are the clinical features of pheochromocytoma? Hypertension is the dominant features. 90% of the cases, these patients will have hypertension. And two thirds of these patients with hypertension, they have paroxysmal episodes. Now, what do you mean by paroxysmal episodes? These are sudden onset of symptoms for some amount of time and then the symptoms subside. What are the symptoms? There can be sudden, severe increase in blood pressure, lung up, accompanied by symptoms like tachycardia, palpitations, headache, sweating, tremor, and the sense of apprehension. You know, usually these symptoms will be along with either abdominal pain or chest pain. It can be associated with nausea or vomiting. Right. So these these are the paroxysmal episodes in patients with hypertension. Sometimes, you know. Uh, there will be only increase in blood pressure and no other symptoms, no palpitations, no tachycardia. It's just only increase in blood pressure and that can occur in less than 50% of patients. Most often, you know, the pheochromocytomas, the patients demonstrate chronic sustained elevation of blood pressure. This sustained elevation is interfered with paroxysms. And what are the trigger for paroxysms? They can be emotional stress. There can be exercise can, you know, trigger these attacks of paroxysms. There can be changes in the posture. Can be sometimes, you know, if somebody palpates near the tumor and even in cases of urination, during urination, particularly when you have a urinary bladder paragangliomas, even urination can, you know, uh, trigger the paroxysmal episodes. That's in paraganglioma of urinary bladder. What are the complications? Now we know that pheochromocytomas contains chromaffin cells which can release lots and lots of catecholamines. So what happens when there is sudden release of catecholamines? It can precipitate congestive heart failure. 
and cause pulmonary edema, myocardial infarction, ventricular fibrillation, and cerebrovascular accidents. So, what 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 will happen to the myocardium uh, when you have lots and lots of catecholamines? See, catecholamines can cause constriction of myocardial blood vessels or they can directly attack the myocardium myocardium i mean there, there can be direct toxicity on the myocardium so when they constrict the myocardial blood vessels it causes ischemic damage which further results in necrosis mononuclear infiltrates and interstitial fibrosis of the myocardium okay the direct toxicity of myocardium also does the same thing you know the infiltration necrosis and fibrosis ultimately this results in instability of the myocardium and you can expect various ventricular arrhythmias and this is referred to as catecholamine cardiomyopathy very important to note that catecholamine cardiomyopathy is basically because of the effect of catecholamines either through myocardial blood vessels or directly attacking the myocardium so now we know that pheochromocytoma secrete catecholamines are the one uh, 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 do they secrete only catecholamines no they can also secrete acth and somatostatin and when they do secrete acth you when the patient manifest with symptoms just mimicking cushing syndrome if they secrete somatostatin they manifest with gastrointestinal symptoms like diarrhea steatoria and other manifestations how do you diagnose pheochromocytoma? Usually, you demonstrate the increased urinary excretion of either free catecholamines or metabolites of catecholamines. You can find free epinephrine, norepinephrine or metabolites of epinephrine and norepinephrine which are vanyl, mandelic acid and metanephrines. So, these can be seen in the urine. Urinary excretion of these are increased. Now, how do you treat pheochromocytomas? So, it depends upon whether the tumor is benign, isolated, localized or they are multifocal lesions. Usually, the isolated ones are the much more simpler ones to handle. All you have to do is excise it completely. Of course, you have to give preoperative and interoperative medication with adrenergic blocking agents because if you manipulate the tumor, you know, sometimes in the process of manipulation, lots and lots of catecholamines can be released and then they result in hypertensive crisis. And that is why these patients are given preoperative and intraoperative medication with adrenergic blocking agents. And that's basically to prevent hypertensive crisis. Multifocal lesions, of course, you cannot uh, you know, dissect the entire adrenal medulla. You have to do with, uh, you know, treat with long term medical treatment just like medical management of hypertension so that's all about pheochromocytoma today we did discuss in detail about the pathogenesis clinical features morphology complications and diagnosis and treatment of pheochromocytoma hit the like button if you have liked this video do comment if you have any queries to ask you can also suggest you know topics for me to cover in further sessions if you find this video useful please do consider subscribing and if you like this video please don't forget to share with your friends Thank you.